okay. Hey guys, I have a really cool one for you today. Now, last week I posted my 750 subscriber special, and that was a lever programmable combination lock, much like this one. It also had a bunch of cool resetty features, um, but it was really secure except for one major downside, which was caught by Deco and a couple other people, and I completely overlooked it while building it, and that was the fact that, that it's not silent. And you might be asking yourself, Zomachu, why would you ever want a silent combination lock? Doesn't that just make things more complicated? And the answer to both of those questions is yes, except to the first question, which wasn't really a yes or no question in the first place. Um, but you do want a silent combination lock because, uh, let me go off uh, on a tangent here. Basically, any combination lock, well, almost any combination lock, there's a couple ones that can't be, but any combination lock almost uh, can be uh, brute forced. And what that means is you just enter in every combination until you get the right combination. And um, this combination lock, you could do that in the previous one, and pretty much any combination lock in Minecraft, you can do that. And in the world, you could do that, though in the real life, they, uh, like, um, send the police after you if you can't get it within, like, 80 tries or something, or just lock you out of your phone for a year and a half. Um, but anyways, uh, brute forcing takes a really long time if you don't know the combination. However, if it was not silent, and it actually gave you feedback if you pushed the right button or not, then it would just make it so much simpler. Like, it, it takes the process down from 3.14 years to, like, 3.14159, like, minutes. Like, I, I'm not even kidding. Like, it, it would just alert you when you push the right button. How much simpler could that get if you're trying to hack into someone's system? Like, it, I, I, why, I, I was such an idiot to not do that the first time. But anyways... This is, uh, whoa, my mouse just did weird things. Um, this is a silent combination lock here. Let me just give you a little example. Uh, a lamp will turn on instead of like a cool door thing when I enter in the right combination. And if your critical thinking skills are the same as a pistachio, then this is the lamp I'm talking about. Uh, one, two, three, and then one is the correct combination. And as you just saw, the lamp just turned on. And um, that just demonstrated it can also handle uh, multiple of the same digit, just like my last one. It has all the features of my last one, um, except it's better in pretty much every way. Now, how is it better, firstly? Well, one, as you just heard, it's silent. And if you didn't catch that, let me just increase my volume to deafening levels. I push a button, and, and there's no sound after that. There's no feedback at all. Um, if I get a right one, if, if I push a wrong button, uh, all you hear is the button, which is really what you want in a combination lock. And l let me just turn that back down before I kill you and me. Um, but anyways, uh, besides the fact that it is better in terms of security, it's also better in size. Um, the lock part on my previous one was four wide. This one is only three wide. So that brings the, the mass down quite a bit. And also one last thing that's good about this is that it has um, a much easier to access output. The previous one you had to use like repeaters and get really awkward and touching things and stuff. Uh, this one is just dust. You just have dust lead out and if you need to extend it, you use a repeater, but it's still a lot less awkward than my other one, which is good. Now, um, a couple downsides to this are that uh, it is a little bit more resource intensive in the fact that you have like twice the amount of repeaters and stuff and like uh, comparators and stuff like that. And it's also a tiny bit slower. However, I will be showing you how to speed it up um, by moving this circuit to the back side at the end of the video. Um, so, you know, let's just get started with the tutorial. And because I'm choking on my throat since it's really dry, I'm going to go grab a drink of water as well. So I'll see you guys in a second with the tutorial. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a four button, four digit combination lock and this is the exact same thing I built in my 750 subscriber special and if, if you can't figure it out from looking at it right now, uh, basically I'm going to be linking it in the description, however uh, in here are blocks, anything, um, you could have sticks, diamonds, whatever, and then all these levers are turned on by default and whatever is turned off that is your combination, for example here is one two, three, and four is the combination right now. Um, so yeah, link will be in the description if you want to watch it. Um, I don't know, like if you want to do this or like if you just have really nothing better to do with your life and that is really sad if you want to watch me instead of like 
watching Iron Man 3 or something anyways. I, I really don't know. Iron Man 3 is a really good movie, though. Um, but anyways, you're going to want to make your Ars Norlatches right now. Uh, tor uh, torches and dust everywhere um, going into each other. That is how an Ars Norlatch does. And uh, torches on these sides right there. And underneath uh, the torches, you're going to want to have dust there. And this will power our mono stables that tell the system when you enter the in a uh, correct number at the correct time. So uh, underneath each one of these, you're going to want to have a dropper, hopper sort of thing. And I actually should have, uh, should have started on this side and work my way backwards. So there, and then uh, there, and then one last one there. And I can't move my keyboard today for some reason. Uh, there. And you're going to want to have blocks in every single one of these. And like I said, these are just going to be telling the system when you entered in the right number at the right time. So power rail on each of them to bud them automatically. And you can't use a piston because that'll make a sound and it won't be silent anymore and they will know when you enter the right number. And that will not be good at all. So don't use a piston despite how much resource friendlier it is. Um, and then under here you're going to just want to have comparators to get a signal out of each one of these hopper guys. Uh, so comparator there and then comparator there and the comparator there. That just goes into a line of repeaters and the unresource friendliness starts. So you just want to have repeaters there and then I'm going to be building uh, the reset now. Um, this isn't actually the reset. This is what I forgot to build earlier. This is um, the logic that prevents you from entering the numbers out of order. So just have repeaters on four. They are very simple and extremely easy. And then the reset is torches in the lattice pattern and stuff. Uh, so just make a lattice pattern, which is basically every other block is a block, and the other ones are uh, air. So torch, 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 and as you see, those will just reset the entire system. And then I'm going to have repeaters there to power the torches and then invert that. So over here, uh, this part you will not need if you're going to speed it up. Uh, so just ignore what I'm doing right now for now, and um, if you are going to be... It, well, if you care about space by like one slice and uh, you don't really care about speed that much, then uh, follow me right now. So you're going to want to have a comparator there, and then a repeater on 4 there, and a repeater on 1 there, and then everything after that is a repeater on 1. And then over here, what you're going to want to do is have a torch, a torch, and then a repeater. And that is it. We are done with the combination. If I were to enter in 1, uh, that will turn on. 2, that will turn on. 3, that'll turn on and then four that'll turn on the logic is essentially the same as my other one so I'm not gonna go over that right now so if you wanna make this thing a whole bunch more faster uh, then what you wanna do is just break, basically break everything in half and the reason why we're doing this is the way I had the droppers placed earlier it would bud if you enter them in too quickly because um, the buttons were above them and it'll power the ones diagonal and bottom to them and I'm sorry for the wind outside it's kind of storming, uh, was raining earlier a lot. But anyways, um, you just set up your droppers like this, and then you can place uh, your items in there, and it'll work perfectly fine. Uh, so item in there, item in there, and an item in there. And that what all that did is just uh, move the buttons down to the sides of the dropper so it wouldn't bud them. Um, and then I could get rid of that, and not that, don't get rid of that. You're, you want to get rid of these as well if you want to just get your resources back. And then uh, you want to flip-flop this torch like that, and then have dust on this side, and going into a uh, piston, and, well, hold on, hold on a second. Before you guys get all over my case saying how this piston makes it not silent and stuff, uh, it, true, it doesn't. It, it makes it have sound. However, that doesn't really matter considering this piston doesn't really care about if you entered in the right number or the wrong number. It'll activate no matter what button you push, if it's a right button or a wrong button. So I just want to get that across that this piston will not alert the hacker in any way uh, if they entered in the right number or the wrong number. In fact, it might give them false feedback, thinking that they entered in the right number every time, and then at the end they figure out they entered in the wrong number, and then they're like, damn it, and they have to start all over again. Uh, so after you place that repeater, you're going to want to have a torch there, and a repeater on, hold on, uh, no, there we go, um, a dust there, and then a repeater on three, and uh, it'll work again. So if I entered one, two, three, four, as fast as I can, as you see, it'll still work, and if I push any incorrect button, 
then it'll still reset. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And like I said earlier, if you want to watch my other video for entertainment value or whatever, then a link will be in the description below. And um, yeah, I guess uh, do stuff to my Twitter and just don't do stuff to Google Plus because Google Plus is stupid. And uh, until next time, goodbye.